Hello and welcome. My name is Mickey Dioshi from Moralty LTD. Moralty LTD is a distributor and training center of Picoscope automotive oscilloscopes in Hungary. We have a privilege of presenting you one of our customers' case study, namely using Picoscope to identificate CAN messages. Join us. Hello everyone. My name is Rid Boxtetter from BR Auto Diagnostics. I am a car electrician technician from 2012 onwards. In the past 20 years, I mainly worked in different brand services. In 2018, I founded my own company. Also, from two years now, I am an avid Picoscope user. One of our customers brought an Audi Q7 from 2012 into our workshop. The problem was that the car's 12-volt battery drained down pretty fast. Naturally, we charged the battery and tested it using Pico Diagnostics, but it turned out to be in mint condition. We also checked the alternator. Everything seemed just fine. Although, we noticed that the back illumination of the warning push button inside the car was turned on. This means that the CAN bus system is awakened somehow. Of course, the car drained down overnight. We used OE diagnostic tools to check for any DTCs present, but we had no luck. There were nothing in the memory. That meant that the fault could only be found via further measurement. I started the fault finding process by a current clamp measurement using Picoscope on the battery positive cable. Afterwards, I compared the current draw with voltage drop measurement on different fuses using a Pico multimeter. We expected that we would eventually find a fuse with a specific voltage drop in millivolt order of magnitude. That would mean that a subsystem could be localized which correlated to our problem. In addition, we found out that the problem is intermittent. It usually occurred after heavy rain or car wash. In order to reproduce this, we tried to create such circumstances prior to our measurements. Further, we needed model-specific OE electrical wiring diagrams to be able to locate fuses and their corresponding subsystems, which would lead us to further oscilloscope measurements. So at the moment, we have no further clue. I used a 60 amp current clamp for the current draw measurement. At the moment, the amp value was as it should be. In standby, it was 0.01.02 ampere. But bear in mind that the problem was intermittent, so we had to create the right circumstances and waited around 5 to 10 minutes to be able to see any changes in the current values. The waiting time always varied so we used single trigger in the settings to catch the right moment. In this very moment, we can see how the current had risen to a peak of 10 amps and then stagnates around 6 amps. It would remain until complete drainage of the battery. I measured all the fuses of the car, and I could read reasonable voltage drop on multiple fuses with the Pico insulation tester in its millivolt measurement setting. So, as I mentioned, I got reading for three, four fuses after the problem occurred, but one of them, fuse 12, 30 amp, had not just considerably higher voltage drop of around 6 milliamp, but it was first one among the others. We looked up this value with the fuse voltage drop table, and surprisingly, it gave us a reasonable parasitic current value compared to the current clamp earlier. So, we identified the fuse number 12 in fuse box number 1, which had the largest parasitic drain. It is rated as a 30 amp fuse. Knowing this, in the OE electrical wiring diagram, we tried to localize which subunit or ECU got power through this fuse. There it is, SF12 fuse, 30 amp, which belongs to Comfort System Central Control Unit. This meant that the Comfort ECU was the first one started up. We continued our research in the wiring diagram of the Comfort System. Of course, we found fuse number two here as well. Since there were no DTCs, and the illuminated warning push button indicates that the CAN network was awaken, initially we focused on the CAN network rather than checking power supplies and groundings. Unfortunately, the comfort system had a wide range of different sensors and actuators, so our only hope was to find them through analyzing CAN messages and somehow identificate the specific module which caused the problematic behavior. Picoscope is a great tool for this, since it has the capability to measure and serial decode CAN and many other protocols. All we need is to hook up two channels to the CAN network, either by using a needle or a piercing probe. Physically, the Comfort ECU was located in the luggage compartment, and the CAN pair of cables were at connector T32D 
pin 1 and 17, can high and low respectively. Pico Scope's channel A and B had been connected to CAN high and CAN low respectively with 1th 1 passive probes. On channel C, the current clamp measurement was still visible for synchronization purposes. Interestingly, two CAN message packages were sent just before the ramping up of the current. When we had a closer look on them, it was clearly visible that the voltage levels of the CAN signals were not following the classical values of 1.5, 2.5, 3.5 volts, but something totally different. For instance, CAN high started from 12 volts and CAN L started from 0 volts. It was a fairly confusing at first glance, but since there were no DTCs and all functions of the comfort system worked well, we could strike out short to ground or power supply, thus we decided to follow up with the serial decoding. Here, only the two CAN channels are visible only. Sample rate was set to fast. CAN FD protocol serial decoding was only possible by using math channel, subtracting B from A, and very interestingly, the baud rate was determined as 100 kilobaud for a kind of slow communication speed. So then, we focused on the previously mentioned two message packages. It could be seen that the very first message with ID 403 and 030213 data field was not valid, since the acknowledgement field remained 1. This meant that no one got the message. Later, the second message with very same ID and data attributes, the ACK field went down to zero, turning it to be a valid message. Okay, now we only have to find out what is behind ID 403 with that data field, which triggered the current ramp up. Based on the previously executed picoscope measurements, we followed up the diagnostics with the identification of CAN message IDs. We sat in the car and started to operate each and every module individually. For example, the MMI radio was one of them. Speaking of the MMI radio, during the testing we could read messages with 40B ID field. Similarly, when we acted on the steering column, we got 2C2. When the network electronics was connected, we measured 400 in the ID field. The first module, which ID was relatively close to our goal, was the front left door, which generated messages with 402 ID numbers. Interestingly, no matter if the front or rear, capacitive handle or the lock button had been operated, the response message ID number was always 402. At this point, it felt like the left side doors were grouped, probably the right side doors, which were connected to the very same comfort ECU, were two. As we expected, the right side doors were in group indeed. Firstly, we tried the front right doors, then the rear right doors, and finally we received messages with 403 ID field. Uh, it seemed as a logical follow-up to investigate the data field. Luckily, this way, we could distinguish CAN messages coming from different function operations despite the same ID numbering. When we operated the rear right door's capacitive handle, we received a message with ID 403 and with 0302050000 data field. Since the car's handle is operable with gloves on, it has a dedicated lock push button. So we continued with this, and we received a message with ID 403 and with 03021200000 data field. Uh, we found no match, so we could rule out the rear right doors. Now we were really close to our target. Remember, our problematic message had a 403 ID and 03021300000 data field. Theoretically, we only had the front right doors capacitive handle and its lock button as the malfunctioning element. We tried out the front right door's capacitive handle, and it responded with the very same message we measured earlier when the problem occurred on its own. Therefore, we identified the module which had been the source of our problem from the beginning. So we disassembled the internal door panels of the front right door. Um, we disconnected the connectors to the door handle. Both sides, the male and female sides, were in perfect shape. No sign of water ingress or oxidation, really. Our educated guess was that most probably the handle sensor housing from the outside might got some water inside, which fooled the capacitive sensor in a way that it felt like there was a hand inside, which initiated the whole waking up procedure. Since water remained there, it was recorded not only as a single touch, but rather a continuous one. And this is the reason why we had no DTCs present. 
We found the problem, fixed the capacitive door handle by changing the module. We undertook multiple days long testing, recreating wet circumstances, and the car wouldn't reproduce the same issue. There was no unwanted battery drain anymore. It really worth to mention that without picoscope measurements, we wouldn't be able to distinguish whether it was a faulty comfort ECU, door electronics, door handle, and so on. In conclusion, using picoscope is the most economical way for such tricky electronics problems. Richie, thank you for having us here today. We really hope you all could learn some new things about using picoscope in the field of automotive diagnostics. And remember, test, not guess. Thank you again.